Hey there viewers, Eric O here. Well, I've got to work on my own vehicle today. <laughs> it's been plaguing me for maybe six months. Uh, Ridgeline, I drive a 2006 Honda Ridgeline and the uh, uh, power steering's been acting up on it for a while. and I've been neglecting it and putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And um, probably a lot of you that are pretty familiar with, uh, you know, Hondas and Acuras and their little power steering pump problem typically they'll start to cavitate the pump, aerate the fluid, fluid leaks all over. There's um, uh, where the inlet comes from, the remote reservoir. Uh, there's an O-ring there that goes bad and it'll start, uh, you know, start sucking air around that O-ring and, you know, ultimately make the fluid cavitate and foam up and when you shut the car off it, uh, you know, spills the fluid all over. But that's not the case on this one. Um, and this is going to kind of sound like some Swaptronics, but uh, <laughs> I haven't done any actual tests on it per se, any pressure tests on the pump. But in my experience, it's definitely acting like a failing pump. Um, you know, it won't even go up against, it won't even open the pressure relief valve. Um, and it's just making all kinds of noise. So I don't feel like going to the shop uh, to work on it because usually if you go down there on a weekend and you open the door, you get hounded by about 50 other people and you get sucked into doing things and then you never see the light of day again for your weekend. So it is a Saturday. I went down to Napa. I picked up a pump and we're going to attempt to change this in the driveway at home. So we'll see how it goes. Kind of hard to tell in the video, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what you'll hear, but it does a little whining, it turns really, really hard. You know, you pretty much have to, you know, double fist this thing to turn it. So it works good for about a minute while it's cold, but then after that, she's toast. So I'm gonna grab my little Joe Homeowner tool kit. <laughs> Oddly enough, I have very few tools at home, but I've got this little Crescent tool kit. So we'll see if we can get this thing changed out in the driveway. Well, the good news is it's right on top. It shouldn't be that big a deal to change. I don't know why I've been putting it off for so long. I just have. Okay. Yeah, get something here so we can get this belt off. So it looks like the belt tension there is a 14 millimeter. These Hondas are usually pretty stout. I don't know if I'll be able to. Oh boy! You know what? Before we take that off, uh, probably be a wise idea to uh, maybe crack that bolt loose on the end of the power steering pump so we can get the pulley off. I forgot. I don't have any air tools or anything here. I feel out of my realm. That, uh, that takes a 19 socket. Unfortunately, I don't have a 19 wrench at home. I don't think, even if I pull that harness off, I'm not gonna have enough room to get in here with a ratchet. Ah, uh, 19, 19. Um, you know what, probably over in the tractor, I probably got uh, a three quarter, which is probably close enough. Let's go see. I think I've got a three quarter in here. Got a one size fits all. Yeah, we should have a three quarter. Whoa. Whoa! All right, we should be in good shape. Okay, back in business. Um, got my three quarter inch there. The thing is, See, we're gonna have to. Uh, I think what I can do is probably stick a pair of pliers in here, kind of hold the pulley. Man, kind of 
wish I had some hair tools. Need something to uh, kind of wedge in here a little better. Um, hmm. Catch it on the bottom side might be a little easier. There we go. Let me get another wrench. We'll double it up. Can't at least crack that loose. I think I just think it's a lot easier to do it right now than it is going to be on the ground. There we go. Oh, that was tight. Those are just spined on there, so we shouldn't have a problem getting the pulley off. You know, we're not going to have to pull the pulleys, so. belt off. Boy, that sucker is tight. All right. Beautiful. I'm just going to leave the belt on everything there. Fortunately, down in my bike room I had some pig mats. So I think we're just gonna stuff one under here to kind of catch anything we spill and keep it from getting on the belt. So I probably could have prepared for this a little bit better, but I didn't. <laughs> See, sometimes it's tough. I don't know if any of you guys are shop owners, but boy, you go down on the weekend and you can be down there at two o'clock in the morning and close sign up and when you turn on the light, they will come. <laughs> Off there right now or not yet. Look at that. We're good. So we got the pulley off, and that is uh, just splined in the center there. So it makes it uh, makes it nice because you don't need a uh, power steering pulley remover tool. But all right, looks like just a couple bolts and uh, the return hose here. I think I have a pair of pliers. This is gonna make oh yeah a little bit. It's hot. Not too bad. So that O-ring I was talking about is it goes right on here, right where this return hose or yeah yeah I guess it would be the return hose or the suction hose rather from the uh, reservoir where that hooks to the pump. There's it's held it's just a plastic elbow. This is held on with a just a single like 10 millimeter bolt. And there's an O-ring that goes in here, and often those O-rings go bad. And it'll start sucking air, and it'll, it'll act just like the power steering pumps out of fluid. It'll, it'll, it'll start cavitating and you know making all kinds of racket, and you know that real whiny power steering sound. It's super common on Hondas and Acuras, and uh, yeah, Hondas and Acuras. <laughs> and uh, like I say, you change that O-ring, you know, it's a, it's a 10 cent fix, really. Um, a lot of people I've seen mistakenly replace power steering pumps or reservoirs. Uh, for that symptom and not fix it so well it fixes it but ultimately it could have been fixed a lot cheaper how's that take our pressure hose off here kind of muggy out today it's been raining all night it's not very warm well, I mean it's Pretty warm. I mean, it's like probably 70 out, but boy, the type of humidity makes it way hotter. Seem way hotter. So there's our pressure line. Just a couple bolts there. Hold that on. Kind of stick that up here. So, and then it looks like the uh, looks like the pumps held on with just two uh, two bolts. Looks like they're 12 millimeters. So I'll grab that socket. These uh, Crescent brand wrenches or socket ratchets here, they're, uh, they're levers opposite of everybody else. I'm always flicking it the wrong way whenever I have to use it. Ouch. I'm stuck now.
it is. Ain't much to it. Let me uh, go dump this oil. So there's your old pump. I don't know if it comes with a new inlet or not, but got this new one from Napa or a remanufactured one anyways. It's gonna grab it down in advance, but uh, theirs are made by Cardone, which are 95% of the time garbage. The Napa ones now are made by BBB Industries, uh, which is great. Um, they make some really good quality products, so there's our there's our new pump. So uh, fully remanufactured supposedly, and um, yeah. So we're gonna have to swap over our our plastic tube there for the inlet. It comes with a couple new O-rings. So we'll get that swapped over and get it put back on. And I don't know what your guys' experience is with aftermarket remanufactured stuff, but Cardone is like the doorman of remanufactured products, it seems. There's one even worse, Fenco. They used to carry this company called Fenco, and <laughs> them things were terrible. So, and I picked up a couple uh, couple uh, 12 ounce bottles of uh, the Prestone Asian power steering fluid, which I think is just mineral oil, but uh, this here says premium full synthetic. So it's their special Asian formula. So we'll see, but I thought like the a lot of the European stuff and Asian stuff ran just mineral oil, but I may be wrong. So grab a 10 millimeter, we'll get this swapped over. Well, that's the o-ring I'm talking about if that o-ring goes bad that can that can give you uh, some pretty uh, pretty good symptoms of a bad pump so I'll just keep that in mind Looks like, <laughs> looks like when they remanned it, they stuffed the uh, plug, the plug that hole, they stuck it way down in there. I tell you what, if you didn't pay attention to that, that would, uh, that'd be a real pisser. You could shove that thing down in there, grab a pair of pliers. different working at home <laughs> it's pretty pretty quiet here compared to being down in the big city population of about 900 all right I think we're ready to go back on well we got another another plug here I'll try to take that out Hold right here Save them to put back in the old one. All right, let's go. Make sure you torque that to spec. Because remember, everybody on YouTube is a torque expert if you don't torque something. So there, I got those all torqued to the factory specs 100%. We'll take it and uh, get our pulley back on there. certain you just saw me put that on backwards 
And you did. Let's put it on the right way. So, I guess we'll clarify that. The part of the hub here that sticks out. That's flat, that one sticks out. That goes in towards the pump. Live on camera, made a mistake. All right, we'll tighten that down once we get the belt on. You know, I think I'm gonna dump out that reservoir, so I'm gonna leave that hose off currently. Get the new O-ring for the uh, pressure hose and we'll put that on. Make sure you torque that to factory specs. And I think we're good. I'm gonna pull, like I said, I'm gonna pull this reservoir out, hopefully without making too big a mess. I'm gonna go dump all the fluid out of that, spray it out with some brake parts cleaner, and call that our flush job. Sorry if the camera work's not the greatest, but I don't have anything to set my camera up on. So these reservoirs simply just pull up there's a metal bracket they sit into it, you can just pull them up out of it stuffed my uh, pig mat there underneath it so hopefully we can do this with minimum spillage or breakage hey look at that I don't think it spilled a drop. All right, I'm gonna go dump this out, and I'm gonna rinse out with some brake parts cleaner. All right, so once you once you take your reservoir off, the reason you want to spray that out, um, you just take your cap off, you turn it upside down, and and spray it out, and then spray inside the uh, return line here from the rack. There, inside the very bottom of here, there's a really really fine mesh screen, essentially like the filter on this system. Um, so you want to make sure that's good and cleaned out and uh, you know it's always good to particularly if you have a component failure um, if it was a severe component failure and there was a lot of metal and contamination in the system we'd have to you know we'd have to unhook hoses and and really try to push this uh, push this stuff out of here um, you know a lot of people are probably gonna squeal on the in the comment box about not doing a you know power steering flush but quite frankly I don't have a power steering flush machine at home and you know, I'm not going to crawl around in the mud to, uh, you know, unhook the hoses and such. The fluid uh, wasn't sparkly. Um, it didn't look like it had any metal contamination in it. Um, so, you know, more than likely with this pump or with the old pump, we're probably just dealing with a, uh, a pressure switch failure or, you know, um, is what I suspect. Uh, you know, if the pump just wasn't, wasn't building pressure, I suppose we could tear it apart, but... We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't do any testing on it, um, <laughs> so I just think it was bleeding off pressure through the, uh, you know, either a broken spring or, or something of that nature, but I don't know, it's all speculating, but make sure you just clean out your reservoir, spray it out, that gets rid of, you know, probably half the 50% of the fluid, but I'm doing it at home, so, and it's my own vehicle, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so we're going to hook this back up. Click your reservoir back on there and hook the return line up. I suppose that if you want to, you know, quick and dirty, you want to get out some more fluid. If you had the front of your vehicle jacked up and the pressure hose and the return hose unhooked, you could turn your steering wheel left to right and push the majority of the fluid out of the rack, you know, key on, engine off. And, uh, you know, that would probably get quite a bit more fluid than, than just dumping out your reservoir. So. I'm not too awful worried about it. So we got those hooked up. 
I'm gonna grab some brake clean what I got left in that can and I'm gonna hose some of this stuff off. That way I don't get any of it on my belt. Have that chirpy. And we'll uh, put the belt on, fill it up, see if this works. You want to try to make sure your power steering pulley is uh, clean and free of power steering fluid. Seems to me if you get uh, power steering fluid on your belt, pretty much the end of it, or antifreeze, you know, they have that constant, you know, chirp. Always seems impossible to clean off. So, there, I think we got it all clean. I don't know if the parts stores sell these uh, these pig mats, but I could see how these would be super handy for uh, uh, you know for doing this at home or doing a lot of jobs at home. These things hold a uh, pretty insane amount of fluid, um, so you know, particularly working outside, you know, where you really can't throw down you know kitty litter or you know floor dryer or what have you. So yeah, something to keep in mind. Okay, let's get this belt back on there. So that'd be a treat. Oh, man, dude, these things are so tight. I can muster my little pea shooters. Jeez, I don't know how much tension they got on those things, but. Whew. Okay, grab some fluid and see if it was a fix or a flop. Let's see how the old press stone does for us. I don't have many tools at home, but I did have some gloves, some pig mats, and of course, brake clean. No home is complete without brake clean. Uh, guess I'm wishing I had a funnel right about now, but. Yeah, it's a little over the full mark, but I assume it's gonna suck down a little bit so get some of this crap off the engine we'll get it fired up gonna be so sweet having power steering now um, definitely feel the difference you know immediately as soon as it started you know particularly at an idle even when the wheels uh, kind of sinking down here in the driveway you know it still turned pretty easy so uh, fluids just between the low and the full mark so I think uh, oh here comes Vanessa oh what are you doing huh look at this sweet that's a sweet cup too it's my favorite cup. Got a farm all cup. What are you doing? So I think we have steering again. That'll be good. It was optional here for quite a while. 
but I only drive 10 miles to work, so and it's pretty much straight, so you really don't need to steer. But she wants to go camping, so in order to tow the camper, I've got to have steering. You don't think we could tow it with a minivan? Probably, but then you have to buy a hitch. It's either buy a hitch or buy a power steering pump, hmm. and they're almost the same cost. Hmm. So. I guess you need power steering first. Yeah, it's kind of like that, uh, the cobbler's kids that uh, have no shoes. <laughs> it's kind of like that because this thing's leaking antifreeze out of the water crossover pipe and I get the occasional P0420, which I really don't even want to face. No steering, you know, stuff like that. Vanessa's van, like a bazillion miles over for an oil change. I took care of that. But she took care of that, so... I couldn't convince her to uh, fix the power steering here. So, anyhow, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Now that I have steering again, I'll uh, get this uh, topped off with fluid and we'll take it for a little shimmy and uh, make sure it stays good. If it doesn't, I'll report back to you, or will I? <laughs> so, well, if it doesn't work, I'll report back with the how to change a rack and pinion, uh, but it's not gonna be the in your driveway series, so. <laughs> At any rate, viewers, uh, it was a humbling experience working at home with uh, my caveman tools. So uh, it just goes to prove, though, that if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tighten up the power steering pulley. I almost forgot. Whoa.